This is what 57 inches and $2,500 looks like. This is the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. And just like I said earlier, this is a 57 inch gaming monitor. And it's the largest monitor that I've ever unboxed here in the Firewolf Tech channel. Now, normally I'll include an unboxing on my review videos, but I want to give you guys a full unboxing experience. So I'm going to separate these two. So I will be uploading a review video later on. So make sure you guys stay subscribed to my channel and I will give you guys a full review. So first, first off, let's go ahead and dive into the unboxing experience, of the Odyssey Neo G9. First up, we have the port cover. Now this is going to be in a beautiful white color and the actual coating of this is really nice and it's kind of really shiny you can see the light kind of shine with the white coating it is really flimsy and me personally i probably will never use this cover here because if you ever need to add any type of inputs it's going to be super hard to put later on next up we have the monitor stand itself this is going to be arm portion and i do love the color scheme of this this is very similar to all of the other odyssey neos out there they have this really nice white and black scheme very reminiscent of a ps5 and definitely a beautiful monitor arm it is hefty though next up we're gonna have the feet here now this is not my favorite part of this monitor at all because it is very very wide and it takes up so much space it's gonna eat up almost your whole desk and i highly recommend getting a monitor arm but what i do like about the stand though is it does have wingtip screws on the back, which makes installing the actual feet easier on the actual monitor arm. Then we have the core lighting cover over here. It's a little two piece thing. I sometimes forget to put it on to be honest. And then we have the Visa mount adapter. Now you are gonna need to use this if you're going to attach it to a monitor arm. And next up we have all of the accessories here in a bag. First up, we're gonna have a USB upstream cable. We're gonna have a nice US plug here. There's no power bricks it's built into the monitor itself. We have the DisplayPort cable, and then we have an HDMI cable as well. And then finally, let's go ahead and lift this styrofoam away to reveal the beautiful, massive 57 inch gaming monitor. Now, normally I would lift this up myself, but it's so heavy and massive that I just rather just install the actual monitor arm first, but take a look at the size of this this thing is huge i'm gonna give you a more up close and personal look and on the bottom left we're gonna have the us plug and then all of our ports are gonna be on the bottom right portion of the monitor all right let's go ahead and install the monitor arm first thing we're gonna do is we're going to angle it in place now there are four screws that are attached to the actual monitor arm so you are gonna need to use a phillips screwdriver and it's a little bit tedious and a little bit annoying. I prefer monitor arms that are easier to install, but four screws is all it's gonna take. And then finally we have the feet portion. And since it does have those wingtip screws, it's a lot easier to install since we don't need any tools at all. Let's go ahead and screw these two in place. And now we're ready to lift it up. So the 57 inch Odyssey Neo G9 weighs 41.9 pounds. So it's gonna be very difficult doing it on your own, but if you do go to the gym and lift some heavy ass weight, then to be honest, it shouldn't be super hard. And keep in mind, if you are planning on having it mounted on a monitor arm, the monitor itself without the stand weighs 34 pounds. And the one that I've been using on all of my videos only supports up to 33 pounds. So I am gonna have to get a new one. I did order an Ergotron HX, so I will upload a video on that as well. Now, I gotta say guys, the back of this monitor looks absolutely fire. Now, even though they've recycled the same design with pretty much all of the other Odyssey Neos. I still think it's a beautiful design. And you're getting this creamy 1000R curvature that looks so good on this 57 inch. I mean, when you look at the 49 inch variant, you're thinking, man, like this is like the ultimate, but they just keep getting bigger and that's just insane. Now putting up the actual port cover here, you can see that it pretty much looks very seamless even though I'm never gonna be using this, so it's up to you if you wanna, if you wanna use it. Let's go ahead and remove the plastic off this screen. Now tell me that wasn't satisfying to watch. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove all these final plastic pieces all around the monitor. And finally, we got the one covering the Samsung one. All right, now that I have the desk all set up here, it's just missing my mouse pad, which I'll show a little bit later. Now, please excuse the horrible cable mess in the bottom. I do my best to hide it as much as possible, but the desk that I use here is the Vivo Electric Height Adjustable Desk, which is 71 inches wide by 30 inches deep, and the cliche Alex drawers from Ikea side to side. And I also have a Razer soundbar over here, and I actually was able to put it on top of the leg, so I think it looks pretty nice. Uh, but other than that, the monitor itself kind of blocks a lot of the stuff, so I can't wait to get a monitor arm. Now, I ran into some issues trying to power on this monitor, and I finally figured it out. Because this monitor had a, has a super ridiculously high refresh rate and resolution, it does require DisplayPort 2.1, which every time when I powered it on, it was looking for that signal. So I had to manually go into the menu settings and change it to 1.4. So even though I have an RTX 4090, unfortunately, it does not support DisplayPort 2.1 and it won't go all the way up to 240 hertz. It will only allow me to do 120 hertz, but at least I get to keep the resolution of 7680 by 2160. So that's pretty much a little bummer here. So the only graphics cards that support that to my knowledge are the AMD Radeon 7000 series. Um, so hopefully in the future, maybe a 4090 Ti is gonna feature DisplayPort 2.1, but that's pretty much what I found out. Now, just gonna go ahead and show you guys a couple of wallpapers here. Now, all the wallpapers that you see here, I use Wallpaper Engine and you can get this application on Steam. It's only a few dollars and it's really worth it because they have some super cool wallpapers. And every time I do reviews from monitors, a lot of you guys have always asked me, where do I get these wallpapers from? So check out Wallpaper Engine and you never know, you might find a wallpaper that you absolutely love. Now this monitor, the display is stunning. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's fire. Like the dual 4K resolution on this is just something that you have to really see for your own eyes. And it's just so much better than 1440p, hands down. This is beautiful. And I'm just going to go ahead and open up multiple windows so you guys can see here. Having three windows opened up, I mean, you're getting an amazing display. And I can see so much of that. And this is just a beautiful display. Now, the only thing I hate about this monitor is the monitor stand. And as you can see here, I have this beautiful mouse pad from Highstar, and this is basically their largest mouse pad. And because of the feet sticking out so long, you can see that it basically covers, it would cover it, but I spent a lot of money on this gaming pad and best believe I am not going to put it on top of the, the mouse pad. Now powering on the Razer, Leviathan V2 and it looks pretty nice. Uh, you can see the little LED lights on the bottom. It looks really cool. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for a review of the Odyssey Neo G9 because it's going to take me a couple of days for, for me to really test it out. So stay tuned for that.